In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own affiliate blog from scratch using the best and most popular platform, WordPress. Hey everyone, my name is Kevin Smack. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through step by step how to make a website for your business or personal life that look professional without any coding experience required. What are we waiting for? Let's get started. I'm really excited about this. This is a part of a series video number three. If you haven't seen the others and you are interested on how everything starts, we're going from beginning to end of building a website. Check out the playlist above and that'll get you started with how we picked a niche and also some of the things we've already purchased and prepared for this video. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. First thing we're going to do is start the site. So I do use SiteGround. They are an affiliate. If you're interested in them, the links down below, you will save some money. Your first year is really nice price. Starts at $4.99 a month, depending on what you want to do. It does go up after your first year, but if things are going smooth and you work hard, you should be able to generate some revenue by the end of your first year. With that said, that'll help pay for it. Plus they allow multiple websites, which is just great. I have so many websites you don't even know. Let's go ahead and jump right in and show you how to create the new website. Once you are signed up with SiteGround and you log in, you'll go to websites and websites. Here there'll be a button that says new website. Go ahead and click on that. It'll give you an option on choosing domain, setting up a new site and adding extra. If you have not bought the domain, you can buy one just by going to new domain. I actually bought a domain, moved it from GoDaddy, and now it's on SiteGround. It did take a while because GoDaddy had some issues. I should have just bought the site right from SiteGround, but I bought the site a while ago and I'm finally getting started. If you've seen the other video, you know what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and choose existing domain. It's gonna give me a bunch of domains that I have that I've not used. And there it is, only one, wildfog.com. We're gonna go ahead and choose continue. If you didn't know, this is going to be a affiliate site all about fog machines. We're going to do starting a new website and we're definitely going to do WordPress. WordPress e-commerce is if you're going to actually sell things on your site, but you can always add this later. You don't want to add it in the beginning because it can slow your site down. And I don't even worry about the site builder because we're not going to be using the site builder. So let's go ahead and choose WordPress. Here we're going to need to create your admin login. So you put an email address, a difficult password, and go ahead and continue. Can't show this part for obvious reasons, but once you go ahead and create this, go ahead and choose continue. When you get to this part, I do not recommend the scanner. If you want it, you can look into that more, but I would go with domain privacy. Go ahead and choose add and go ahead and purchase it. If you haven't already purchased it when you got the domain name. Next, I'll be creating your site. This will take a moment, so give it about two minutes to create the site. Once you get here, you're gonna have some options to go to your site tools or access WordPress admin. We're gonna actually go to the site tools first. Once you're in here, you're gonna go to security, SSL manager. They give you a free SSL. They do not sell one to you like everyone else does. I just choose let's encrypt and choose get. This will set it up. It's always important to do this first. You want to get HTTPS right away. If you start uploading things and then you go ahead and try this later, you can have some problems because certain images or files may not be set up correctly. So go ahead and set this up. And sometimes it does take a few minutes to go through and be completely set up. You always want to go to the website and see if it's loading with HTTPS after this part is done. Once we're set here, I just go ahead and click the three dots here and choose enforce HTTPS. Go ahead and turn it on. And now I just give it a minute or two. I'll just give it a quick wait and then we'll give it a try. That should be enough time. Let's go ahead and give it a try. We're gonna go back to my account and we're gonna open up the WordPress kit. Go ahead and choose WordPress admin. You'll need to log in with your credentials you've created. I'm going to ask for three quick steps. Go ahead and choose start now. I'm going to ask for a theme. We're going to be using the popcorn theme. So we're going to go ahead and skip this and we can do this within WordPress. I'm going to ask a bunch of things if you want to add them. I usually add the contact form, but that's about it. Here I'll ask for other things. I'm going to leave all these blank and we're just going to go ahead and jump in and complete it. And we'll choose go to dashboard. Now we're in here, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a few things. First, we're gonna put our theme on, and then we're gonna go ahead and put some plugins. 
Let's check to make sure we are HTTPS. All you do is go to uh, settings in general. And here we want to change a few things. We just want to go into here and choose S and S. I don't want a tagline and for site name, it's wild fog. Go ahead and save the changes. It will ask you to log back in because now you've changed it to HTTPS. And let's check it. So you'll see wild fog appear. Just hover over it and then right click on visit site, open a new link. And let's see how we go. We got the lock, so we are good. The lock shows that we are HTTPS and that's awesome. Nice short domain name, love it. So let's work on getting some things updated here. First, we're gonna go to the theme. Now I did go ahead and purchase the popcorn theme. It was actually provided for free, so I wanna thank Carl and everyone at the, on the team for that. But if you are interested in purchasing it, you can check it out down below. Basically sponsored video and I am an affiliate. So here we wanna go ahead and choose add new. And what we're gonna do is choose upload theme. We're gonna choose a file. We'll go to website, theme, and we're gonna choose popcorn. Now I have not used this theme at all yet. This is my first time doing it. So we're gonna kind of figure it out together and see how it works. I'm excited to try it though. If you are not looking to purchase a theme, my other websites are set up with WP Basic, and that is a great free theme. We're gonna choose Activate. All right, now we have the theme. You can get a quick look at it here. We're gonna go ahead and change things around and get an idea. There's an affiliate disclaimer here, that's nice. I don't like this uh, Bill with Popcorn thing, but we can remove that later. This is a purchase version. Guessing we can do that. Read more blogs, so that looks good. And a quick welcome to the theme. And more about us. All right, interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at the menus. So it looks like they do have a search feature built in already. So I was going to go ahead and add Ivory. Search, but since this is already in here, that's one less plugin we'll need, so that's nice. So let's just create some pages here. We'll create About Us, and that's all we're going to do for now publish. And then we'll create beginner's guide. And let's just leave it at that for now. We'll add more as we go. But now we want to go back into the menus and link those up. So we'll just add those two, add the menus. And then you have a beginner about contact. So all we did was make pages. Once the pages appeared, you can select them here, add the menu, and now they're gonna be in here once we save them. So we saved it, we go in here and we refresh. And you can see beginner about contact us. So, we are all set here. This is pretty large. I'm gonna see if I could change some of this. That seems pretty big, but we're gonna work on that as we add some things here. I'm very particular with my formatting because I'm so used to one theme for so long. So we'll see how that goes. So let's go ahead and add some plugins while we're here so we can get those set up. So we're gonna choose add new. Here's a list of my plugins. So the theme is popcorn. Again, if you want a free one, WP Basic is free. Plugins I use are Duplicate Page. Amazing plugin, my favorite plugin ever. And you will see as we go through this, 
why this is like one of the best things ever. Insert headers and footers. This is going to be used for Google so they can track stuff. And then I research we usually use for this here, but they already have that. So we can just skip that one. And then finally, ultimate add ons for Gutenberg. We're not going to use a page builder here because page builders are old and a thing of the past. Now we're going to use Gutenberg because they've really done a nice job and you don't need to do it anymore. Later and not today, I mean a few months from now, we will add a Zoic when ads are on the page, AAWP when buyer's guides are added, and Link Whisperer when interlinking is too much to handle by myself. When I start spending like 45 minutes linking one page, then I know, okay, it's time to get a plugin to handle that. But now that we got that, let's customize a little bit here. We do have a logo that we purchased, so let's go ahead and customize that. You might see me click around a little bit till I get used to this, but we'll see if we could find stuff. I do have a logo. I did not create a site icon. Ooh, I'm terrible. I'll have to do that. We're going to use the PNG file. Select. We're going to ignore cropping and let's see how it looks. Bad. The uh, Publish this. Let's just kind of get a quick look at the page. So there we have the logo Wild Fog. There's a good amount of space here. I wonder if we could remove that. I'm sure there's ways and I should have watched some tutorials on popcorn theme, but we'll kind of figure it out as we go. OK, good. There is a hide tagline. Doesn't look like that bought us any space, though. So here I want to use the color instead of red. I definitely want to use orange. I have this here. Colorzilla. You highlight a color on the page. You click, copies it to the keyboard. And then you copy it and you click on here and paste. Not too many hashtags. Again, here we go. So now I'll match the same color when hovering over. Uh, we're just going to remove this for now. I do want to go ahead and test the page speed to see how it is, just because I'm curious. So just grab the main page here and analyze here. Wow. I mean, there's no content on it, but 99 is very nice. So very nice. We'll add stuff in see how it goes as we move on. Let's add the plugins. Duplicate page. Okay, we got that. Add new. Got one more. Ultimate add ons for Gutenberg. Go to pages and add a home page. Go under the main menu and also add that. Drag it to the top and then don't forget to save it. Go back and refresh. Go. So.
We're going to go ahead and choose a static page and choose home because that's going to be the home page. So now people just go to wildfog.com, it's going to automatically go on the home page. So now we have home, beginner, about us will change. Um, I'm not sure why it's showing posts here. We'll uh, edit this page, see how this works. All right, so I'm trying to figure out how to remove these posts within here. Maybe starting a site with a new theme that I haven't tried was probably not the best idea. All right, we got the basic setup for right now. We got the home, we got beginner's guides, about us, and contact us. So as far as home and beginner guides, we're going to transform these as we get more content. We'll add more and kind of go from there. But we want to get some content on the site so we can get it moving. We also need to set up Google Analytics, which is something that I loathe because the new Google Analytics, in my opinion, is absolutely terrible and I can't stand it. The old stuff is great and I love it and the new stuff is just horrendous. I just can't take it. But we're going to set it up anyway because we need Google to know, hey, we're here. Start uh, putting us in the sandbox. So in Google Analytics, you're going to go to admin. Create new property. Create Google Analytics for property to measure your web. Yes, property name. Wild fog. I changed the time to New York. Close enough. Everything else looks good. Who's next? Small business. And I'm going to choose these options. I'm going to choose create. I'm going to say choose a platform. We're going to go web. I'm going to ask for the URL. I'm just going to copy it. And then I'm going to remove the HTTPS. I'm also going to remove the dot on the end there. This time I'm going to put a space. Stream name Wild Fog, just so I kind of have a better idea. Enhance measurements, sure, whatever. Let's go ahead and create stream. I'm going to copy this Google site tag. Go into settings, insert header and footer. I'm going to paste it in here and save it. All right, so we have the tag set up. Hopefully that's enough. Like I said, I always have problems with this because it's the newer version. I'm hoping I did that correctly. <laughs> it, fortunately, it's not showing the new stuff. Let's go to real time, see if we see anything here. Let me try going to, on my phone, see if it's picking it up. I'm going to do it from a different IP address, turn the Wi-Fi off, just to see. This theme does look really good on mobile. I have to say that it must have been built more for mobile, which is smart because like 90 some percent of my viewers are always mobile. Hey, you buy page title and screen name one. All right, good. We're working. There we go. All right, so we're good. Yeah, you know, this does look really good on mobile. Kind of would like my logo a little bigger, but that might be on my side. All right, Google Analytics is set up. We can forget about that. It's done. Yay. All right, so time to add some content. I am not a planner when it comes to categories for websites. I make beginner's guides and I put everything here. And then when I get 20 or 30 articles, I can kind of see where the website's going. And then I go ahead and shape the things here to match correctly. Here's an example with best playgrounds. It's home, playground info, best playground sets, 
playground DIY, playground maintenance, and games. Basically, keywords I want to hit. And those become the menus. And I'll kind of see what that is as I go forward more. So now we need some content. And yes, I did order some content, so we are set there. We're going to go ahead and add it in here. We've got four articles completed. So it'd be good to get those on and get everything moving. But let's go ahead and go into our posts, all posts. We're going to go ahead and just uh, crash the one that's in there. We're going to add a new one. And here we are. Let me look at one here. Let me try to get a small one to start. I like starting with a not so difficult one. All right, so here we go. Let's add some content. First, I want to thank Carl for getting the order done so quickly. It was amazing. Got it done. And then I went through my website, requestwriter.com, and I ordered it through my site. If you like what you're seeing here and you want to hire my writer, just go to my website, requestwriter.com. There are some people that are signing up. If you sign up, make sure you say how many words the price is for. I'm saying if you're signing up to sell your services. There's been some people that have not been doing that lately, so I can't approve them. But this one here is the one that I use. It is the featured one with the star and the pro, good ratings. I have a lot of repeat customers coming through, and it's great. It says evergreen blog content. Let's click there, order it. Each quantity is 500 words, so if you need a 2,000-word article, just go ahead and put quantity 4 at the end, and he will get it going for you. The articles I have here are edited just slightly by me, so most of it's going to be pretty much as it appears. So this is going to be fog machines, safe to breathe. So these are the keywords I'm going for. Yes, I'm showing you my keywords. That's crazy, Kevin. What are you doing? That's just how I roll. <laughs> so now we have the permalink that is not correct. So we need to change that. We're going to change a few more things. First, we're going to go to settings and discussion. We're going to turn off comments because comments barely ever do I notice a real comment. It's almost all spam trying to get links. And then you can go ahead and choose an avatar if you'd like. We go with retro and we'll save that. We'll go to permalinks and we want to change permalinks to uh, oh, this looks right. Why it wasn't working there for us. We'll have to take another look at that because it, it's looking like this. But it's saying it's this. So I'm just going to hit save changes. We're going to change this to private till we post it. Not really a big deal right now, but I do like to not release a post until it's complete. There we go. It updated. For some reason, it was having some problems, but this is what it is. So fog machines safe to breathe is the keyword. You always want to have your keyword exactly with dashes in here. You don't have to put the dashes. You could just put spaces and then click out of it and it'll automatically put the dashes for you. Now what we want to do is change this and actually put the title. And it looks good. But I like to have my affiliate information right away. And the best way to do that is just go to one of my websites. We'll go to bestplaygroundsets.com. We'll click on how to keep bees away from your playground. I'm going to copy here to here. And I'm just going to paste it. And then this is going to be the table of contents. So slash TAB for table of contents. And then we count, copy everything else. Not really a huge deal. I just want the bottom to look similar. I like to have a thing at the very bottom, so we'll just put that there. Copy and paste is lovely in this. Just make sure there's no spaces and it'll be pretty good. So we're going to select this. I'm going to change the background color to custom. My tooltip's kind of freaking out, so I'm just going to go in here and grab the colors. Okay. 
Okay. Save it. Private, don't worry. I'm done with the other site. I'm going to change the table of contents around as well. Uh, content. Make collapsible. I like it to have that option. Color of the icon. Go red because they do have a lot of red in this. Go orange as well. I'm a big fan of orange if you haven't told, if you can't tell. That will change style. Background color, I like it clear. This is up to you. I just doing it how I like it. And then border color, I like to match it with the orange. And we'll update. We'll right click on view post, open a new window so we can see what we're working with so far. I'm going to create a new user. So basically go into user and add new user because I want to have an author and I don't want everyone to always see my uh, admin information. So here we are, our fog machines, safe to breathe, fog machine health facts. All right, so looking good, we need an image. That's going to be big. And we also have to put the content in here yet. So let's go and look for an image. I use Canva. It's like 10 bucks if you buy it for like a year, a month, and you get unlimited. So fog, breathe, we'll put in and see what comes up. This doesn't look too bad. We'll uh, open that new tab, we'll table that one. Sometimes you can't find the best pictures, but we're just looking for good enough, something that's not used not a lot. This one looks decent too. This one looks exaggerated. I wouldn't say I'm the best at picking this portion out, so I will. Just like a fog machine. I think we're going to use this design because I looked through stuff and this looks like a good one. Use design, custom size. I use a weird size and you guys are probably going to go crazy for this, but this is the numbers I use. I don't know why. Use it on every site. Always works. Kind of weird to use, but go on with it. If it fits, yeah, that's good enough. I sometimes add in a filter. If I do, I use festive and turn it down a bit, but that doesn't look good. Back to, let's not do filters, but let's adjust it. Brightness is always important, I notice, because images always seem to be a little darker. So even if just add like to 10 on brightness, I think that's a good idea. I love vibrance. <laughs> I mean, it's one of my favorite things to play with, but you don't want to do it too much. A lot of people notice it and it can hurt people's eyes. So it's up to you, but I like to add a little bit of vibrance to give it a little extra. I mean, like, I like it almost all the way up, but I'm not going to do 15. We'll download it. I do as JPEG. Put the quality up because my stuff will take care of the size. The Zoic will. And now I want to save it in here. You'll notice I have a directory here. So I have a template directory for my hard drive. It's just called website. And then under it is the logo, music if needed, thumbnails, videos, this is more if it's a YouTube thing, and then website for the website part. So this is part of the website. You never know if you're gonna create a YouTube video later. And it's always good to know where to get your logo right away. So I go under websites, and then there's articles, images, themes, this is an image. And here we're gonna copy our keyword and just paste it in there. That way it's easy to identify. It's not a problem in the beginning, but as you get more and more, it can get a little difficult. 
So now we're back. We're going to go ahead and feature image. Set the feature image. We're going to upload. And then you would put your keyword as the title, but if you saved it correctly, it should already be there. And then also put it in the alt text. This is good to help it get searched. So it's still private, so I just update it again to make sure it's there. And go over and refresh it, see how it looks. I'm used to my title being under, so I may move that if it lets me then. But we'll work on those as we go further. Let's work on getting the content up because in the beginning, you need your content to start ranking right away. So the time starts. So let's work on that. So now what I want to do is go over to my article, which is just in Microsoft Word. And I'm just going to copy the whole thing. No, sorry. I'm just going to copy the intro, the snippet, the intro. Do it here. And next, I'm going to copy the rest of the article. I'm going to go be below my table of contents. Click, and I'm just going to do it here because I want this on everyone. And then paste. Here we go. We're going to click this line. I like it long. Here we go. Let's change it to orange. I like this small. We'll put it 14. Update again. I update a lot because my son's always running all over the place. So these are not going to show as headers because Google Sheets does not transform this over. Now, if you are pulling this from Surfer SEO, everything pulls over like fabulous because I do use that a lot as well. As you know, I have told you guys about it and I like it. So these are all just H2s. So far. And final, th oh, sorry. Final thoughts. I get more as conclusion. The habit. So now that I have that set up, next thing I'm going to do is make sure my spacing is correct. For ads, it's best to have two sentences per line. So one, except for the snippet, the snippet I usually leave in its entirety. So uh, this is a big start intro here. Let's go through here. I kind of want to have this go like that. And it's one space after a period. If you were raised when I was back in the day, they used to say two spaces. That's because of typewriters. The ink would actually get meshed together with only one space and you couldn't see where it ends. So even though I started on a computer, they always taught me two spaces. Uh, I am still to this day getting used to one space. <laughs> so at times you'll see me do that. And then I'll delete it just to let you know. And this is the fun part. This is just extending your page, making it the content easier to read, longer to read, more ads can be placed. I like to bold before bullet points. Again, bold before bullet points. We can italicize this just to give it a little uh, extra. And I'm just scanning for periods and just when I find this third sentence, boom. And I might back one up if it's a small sentence like before. If not, I'll let it go. Now the conclusion is going to be taken care of again. We're going to come back to the conclusions eventually, and we're going to do a calling to say, okay, now that you know this, you might want to check out this. So now that I'm done again, 
I update because I've lost lots of things in my time, so I'm updating all the time, especially when it's private. So is this article ready? Almost. Now we're gonna do one final thing because it's a new content. We're gonna look for bold. We got a bold there, bold here. And then we don't have a lot of bold here. We wanna make sure there's bold every page. So some here, there's some up there. So maybe just one bold in here. We'll just grab it, bold it, just one section. Uh, you can tell I didn't even read that. But if you read it, you know, even if you do not have asthma or any other breathing problems, prolonged exposure to fog machines can cause bronchitis symptoms. So I just bold stuff. I don't have to read it, but at times I will. If I know there's something in there that's worthy of it, I'll go for it. And we got the bold, bold here. And then we're here. So per page. So we need one of these to be bolded. Um, this looks like an important thing because it answers a question. Let's go ahead and bold that because it says yes, you know, right away. And then do we want them to stop reading after this bold? We would like them to go a little further. So let's just bold the last line. And like I said, eventually we're going to come back here. We're going to add a sentence or two and say, well, now that you know about the health problems, let's talk about safe ones. Because basically this article, if you read it, would say there are some fog machines that create fog that cause health problems. And there's a good amount of them, but there's also ones that do not. So we can do it to have a safe one. Now we update it again. Now we're gonna look here and this will be our final walkthrough before going ahead and making it live. So I can see right now refreshing it, we have no sidebar. I want a sidebar because more ads can go there something we can add later on. Let's look through and see how we are here. Looks good. Nice to read. You can collapse this. Size is pretty decent. Skimmable, very skimmable. I think our bold is good. And now what we could do is go to the posts and let's make it live. We'll go to public, update, and we'll go up here and refresh. So now it is officially live. We're gonna go through here, just another check, make sure everything's lining up, looking good. What I would do now is I would go to any post that is in my mind that is already posted and linked directly to this. Even when using Link Whisper, I do that. But next we're gonna look at how the post looks. It's gonna grab my affiliate thing, it always does. There's some way to fix that and we're gonna do that in another video. This is getting long, so we'll probably show you one more article post, but don't worry, it's gonna be a lot faster because we have this one set up. But I just wanna make sure we get this set up correctly. So it's saying edit and customizer. So customize, popcorn options, post settings. Yeah, let's uh, disable that. I really want to do related posts my way and put them in the sidebar. Disable related posts to. We'll see, we'll see. But I definitely want a sidebar. I'm hoping that's not a problem. Uh, in here, we're gonna also choose uh, uh, allow comments, allow pingbacks. We're gonna turn those off. Category, we're gonna add a new category. We're just gonna call it beginner guides. Uncheck that one. Update it again. There we go. That's how I want it to be. And then it's over. The sidebar will have the extra stuff because we want the sidebar for desktop because the ads bring in a lot more money. And what happens is the sidebar will also put all of that information at the bottom 
if you're on mobile. So we are set there. I do need to research this theme more, and I'm going to do that before my next video so I know a little more on it. But with this, let's go ahead and post another article and show you how easy it is. So that was our fog machines safe to breathe. What I'm going to do on my side, which I, I'm not going to actually show you here, is going to turn my keyword green, showing that I've posted it. I'm going to put the date that it was posted so I know when I uploaded it. It's a good way to keep track of everything. I go to Google Search Console and we're going to add a new property. So we're just going to click this. Add property. It wants me to go ahead and verify it. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to Wild Fog Site Tools. I'm going to go to Domain and then DNS Editor. Once we're in here, I know this might look confusing, but it's really not. You just go to text. We're going to leave it at the root. Time to live one hour. We're just going to put the value of what they gave us. We're going to paste it in there and choose create. This is just making a little file for one hour saying, hey, this is our site. We'll come back here and choose verify. We're going to check it's there. And sometimes it needs more time. So we're going to give it another minute. There we go. So it took about two minutes after I did it. Or to come through usually it's really quick but sometimes that happens so now we have ownership verified let's go to property and we are in here so now we need to go ahead and get a site map up so to do that and i apologize but there is another plugin i forgot all about it <laughs> we're gonna go to plugins choose add new we're gonna search for xml site maps this is the one i'm using Octulo. We'll do that and we're going to go and choose settings and it's going to give you your site map right here. Just go and right click and open it. Once it's open, copy it from in here and we're going to go into Google and we're going to search console. We're going to choose site map. We're going to enter it here and choose submit. Now this doesn't always appear to be working, but it looks like it is. Sometimes it may not say success. Sometimes it'll say error and it just needs five or 10 minutes to update. We want to give that a little bit of time to make sure it, it does catch on. Also, it does take time to discover the URLs. So you want to give it some time and then refresh it and see if they go in. So since this is brand new, we're good there, but I'm going to still go ahead and do a URL inspection for my new post. So I go to the post, I copy the link, go into here, paste it, and I have a check to see if it is on Google or not. And I go ahead and choose request indexing. And people will tell you most people don't do this. I do this for every single post on every single website because indexing is flawed and people have so many problems and I could still have problems. Who knows? Google just rolls the dice, and if you're unlucky, uh, it's sorry you're unlucky. But if you're not, you're not. So let's hope we are not, and we'll find out. So we have requested this page. So this page is officially done, except for one other thing I would do. I use a program called SERP Robot, and what it does is it tracks my keywords and lets me know how it's going. So I'm going to add my keyword. I'm starting a new project here. And then I would just go ahead and choose add project. Every time I put a new post up, I do three things. I submit it to Google. I put the keyword in here and then I check it off in my spreadsheet with my date that it's been completed. When you're in the project, you'll see here that it is in progress checking the keyword. Obviously it's not going to be there because we just put it up. The newer your site gets, the quicker they find them as your domain authority moves up. But for now, we're just putting them in to track them. I have a new site that's like a month and a half old and nine out of 10 keywords are already picked up. The one I haven't said anything on, it's kind of a secret site. So I'm kind of keeping that one uh, 
a little bit tighter than usual. All right, so if you're still with me, make sure you comment still here. We're going to do another one, and it's going to be a lot easier. So we have this whole page set up just like we want it. We made sure we were very specific. Now what you could do is choose duplicate this. This is that plugin that we put in that I said is amazing. You choose duplicate this and it's in draft form. Go ahead and choose edit. And you have yourself your own template. Yes, it's amazing. I love it. So we are going to do another one here. We're going to do uh, this and put that there. Haze machine versus fog machine is the idea. We're going to change public to private. And then we're going to update it. And here we go. We're going to grab what we need here. So this is a snippet. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the writer hit the mark on this because it is 95 words and it can't be that long. So I'm going to have to change that. This is odd. It usually doesn't do that. But for some reason, it is way too long. We need to have it 60 words at the most. So I'm going to have to revisit that. But in the meantime, let's copy the rest of article. I'm copying over there. I'm clicking in the A and I'm clicking and dragging and going down, looking for my line. There's my line right above it. We'll let go and then control V. And that pastes everything. Round one, we're going to go ahead and change everything to headers. And we're going through this pretty fast. We're going to need a new picture. I'm going to look that up in Canva. To speed this up, I found an image on Canva. It's getting a little tough to find images for fog machines. So we're going to probably have some problems with that in the future. Which is a lot of stuff with niches that seems to happen. All right, so this, it looks like the first one is just a doesn't need to be bolded. Uh, let's see how many words that is. 81. Word counter plus is what we're using for this if you're looking for the Chrome extension that I'm using. Maybe we'll just let it go and see how it ranks and we can work on it later. Uh, we'll do the two sentences. I have a new keyboard, so that's why I, my typing is a little rough right now. I'm still getting used to it. Say my old keyboard pretty much died, so I have an old keyboard I'm currently using. So again, right now, I'm just spacing things out. Spacing's very important. If you don't have this done in your current blogs, it's very easy to just get this all done in a day. Just go through them, and you're just hitting enter after two sentences. And everything we're doing here, we're not using any page builder. This is all just, you know, what's built in nowadays. They've updated so much that it's basically its own page builder, if you will. Having the Gutenberg Ultimate add-on helps a lot because you'll get a lot more features. So if there is something you're looking for that's not in the regular Gutenberg, that'll add it for you. So we're going to link our other article here.
That way it gives a little link juice to the other one. We're gonna update it because it's in private mode. Now we're just gonna bold and then we're pretty much done with this one. we go check it out see how it looks so you notice how quickly we did this one we just copy everything and bang we're in there right now yeah it looks pretty skimmable the bold does draw down to where you need to go. Yeah. Good. So we will just change this to public. And again, a lot faster once you have your first one done. Because all you're doing is copy and paste. Go to beginner guides, there you are. Now we have two articles. I wanna submit this to be searched by here. While that's doing that, we'll go in here and we'll choose add keywords because that does take a minute or two to find that. We're gonna choose phase machine versus fog machine. It did finish searching the other one. It didn't find it. Obviously, site's just getting started. It's going to be a while, but maybe we'll see one of them pick up. There is a competitor that is pretty decent. They probably got about 50 articles, maybe, I think it was. They've been going since 2018. So 50 articles from two, since 2018. That's not very impressive. I would have had a lot more. I'm sure in my first year, we'll probably get to 80 or more. Who knows? Depends on how much stuff we can, how many keywords we can pull from fog machines. But I think we'll do well and we should be able to overtake this. Of course, doing this will also bring some more competition. And if you are considering competing, that's fine. But just know this is a very small niche. So there's not a lot of room or fog machines because they're just not that popular. As you saw when we looked it up, the niche seemed really low. I wonder how it's gonna go. I think we'll do pretty good on ads, but I don't think we're gonna do very well on Amazon affiliate side, but who knows? You know, it's I'm still new to websites. I'm, no, I'm not a professional that's been doing this for 10 years. Yes, I've been making websites for a long time, but this portion is still maybe three years old to me. So we will figure this out and see how this works. We have everything set up here. We'll go over here and something went wrong. All right, we're just, we're not gonna bug Google there too much. We're gonna let it do its thing, pick it up on its own. Brand new site, but give it a few days to search the site map and then hopefully it'll grab that on its own. I'm gonna check off my article here as well. Real quick look, I am just going to analyze the page again now that we got two blogs on it just to get an idea of how it's running. That's the home page, 97 mobile, 100 desktop. That's amazing. Uh, my article, my last article I posted, 95 and 98. That's great. I'll take those numbers for sure because that is a post that's complete. The only thing I'm ever going to do to that post is probably add some interlinking and that's it. And 95, that's a lot higher than my other theme I'm using. So I have to say the theme's running very powerful as far as speed. I'm impressed with that. I just need to figure out the odds and ends of it as I mess around with it. And the largest thing was the LCP, which is probably because of my image being so large, I can tune that down. And when I do switch it to Azoic, they'll also tune down the image size. So I feel like we should probably have about the same scores with a Zoic because we're going to, you know, lose a little speed because it's on a Zoic, but we're going to gain a little speed because of caching and the images.
All right, I've decided to add everything in one video, so we're going to continue on. I did take some time off and research this, so I do understand popcorn theme more, and it looks really good. So let's work on that. First thing we're going to do is work on this. Welcome to popcorn theme. We want to change that. We're going to go ahead and choose customize up here. Disclaimer, front page settings. Welcome to popcorn. We'll say welcome to wild fog. We put a space in between wild fog. I think we should just to identify it a little better. Let's go ahead and try this in Jarvis, see how it works. We're just trying to get a little bit of information to throw in there. And I'm not that creative, so we will go through and use this. Uh, that one looks pretty good. Let's copy it. We're going to throw it in here, but we're definitely going to cut it down. Because. Well, let's see here. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. I like that. We'll leave that there for now. It's a good intro on everything and how what this site's about. Uh, more about us. We're going to change that button to the beginner's guides. Let's copy that link. Take off everything after beginner's guides. More about us. And we'll put a... Uh, maybe we'll put... Please read on and we'll remove that. Please read on. Uh, I don't know how I like that or not. We'll see. Kind of see how. We could change the color of the button. I don't know if I want to change everything to orange or not yet. I'm kind of on the fence. I do like this red. Kind of like offsets the orange a bit. So we'll see about that. But for now we have that and that's the main thing. Let's go ahead and publish it so everything takes place right away. And now the site should be pretty good now. This is the main thing I was missing, but I do want to add the rest of the content. I also feel the fonts a little uh, light, so let's change that a bit too. And not just here, but in the articles as well. It just feels like it needs some more weight, basically. Let's try like a 500. The a little better to me. Um, I'm going to up each one of these just by one. I like large, large font. I mean, I usually use 20 on most of mine, but I think just going up a little bit. Actually, you know what? Let's make this 18 too. I want everyone for all ages to be able to read this without a problem. All the other things I think were pretty good. Maybe the weight in the title, 400 maybe. Let's see what a 600 looks like just to get an idea. That looks good too. I like it to stick out a bit. I think we'll stick with that. H2 will go up to 400. And H3 that will stick with the 300 for the rest. I don't know if there's a way to change this font. Let's see if there is. We can even change the default font. System what it's on now. Now. Um, I do like Helvonica as well. I know uh, WP Eagle is really into it too, so I think I might choose that because it looks pretty nice. So just to be clear, when I stopped the video, I did go ahead and watch his video to get some more information on the popcorn theme, and his video and my video are eerily similar. <laughs> I was like, geez, it's like we did almost the same video. Except, of course, he knows popcorn theme a lot better than me because he helped create it and he knows his stuff. So... Would wonder, yeah, you know what? I'm not crazy about the current ones. New Roman. I don't know. We're going to do Georgia. We'll try these fonts. Let me know what you think, if these fonts are a mistake or not. I'm not really the best font person. I just do what I think looks good. 
it does look like this did change a bit. Much easier to see. So now we are looking really good. Liking the site overall. Let's go ahead and add more posts. I found out how to get these marked as feature posts. All you do is go in and do a quick edit and click this, make this post sticky. And let's see, I wanna look on my side to see what posts I'm currently putting up. Because I just ordered posts that were the most popular right now. I think Haze Machine versus Fog Machine could be a really good one. So we'll mark that as a featured. And are they safe to breathe? We'll mark this one as featured too, because the other ones don't look like they will be. That way we have at least have two featured posts on the front. And what happens is with featured posts, they put all the posts as featured. If you don't automatically select one like we just did. But yeah, overall, I, I think the site looks great. I'm liking the theme, it's fast. Oh, this isn't gonna have any posts because, oh, it's not gonna put featured posts on this page. Okay, good to know. But we're gonna add two more posts, so we'll put that there. I think I might've turned off featured posts here, and maybe that's something I didn't wanna do. They will related posts. Yeah, we'll put we'll leave related on because I want related and we'll just try it their way to see how it works. Like I uncheck that or I check that as well. So we're just going to undo those things. Let's go ahead and throw some more posts up, see if this helps. So again, what we're going to do is just go to a post that is similar. We're going to choose duplicate it. Now that it's duplicated, we're just going to choose edit. And this one we're just going to call microfogger. That so we're going to change XX to 10. All right, we're just going to go ahead and highlight the snippet and the intro. We're going to control V. Going to overwrite it. Sometimes this takes a while, especially when you have a lot of info. I also noticed the theme does have this We Affiliate thing built into it, so you don't have to actually create this. But I already created it. And I kind of like the color of mine. I don't see that you can change the color of the other one, at least that I'm, please comment if I'm wrong. So I think I'm just going to leave it go for now since we've already done the work. If I wouldn't have, it would have been a little different. And I'm going to copy the whole article here. Click here, and I'm going to go all the way to the end and control V to paste. And at the end, there's going to be triple at signs. That's basically signaling to myself that there is something to add here. And that's a link to another post we've already done. So we'll put that there because we want to always send them to another place at the end here. A lot of these we don't really want to change because this is probably SEO related. This is how it came up. This one's just capitalization. But this we don't want to change because that's how it works. And microfogger, it's questionable if it's two words or not. I'm just going to leave it one because that's how most people search for it. That's If you're not sure how to do it, type it in Google and see which way they're doing it. And they want R instead of is, but people are typing what is a microfogger. So I'm not going to change that and I'm going to leave it incorrect. I know it's going to bother me, but that's kind of how it is. So uh, since we've got this from Google Sheets, we do need to make the headers. Uh, this is an H2. We're going to make these H3. Hopefully it doesn't lose the numbering. It did because that happens. We're just going to type it ourselves. Just going to go through all the 10 reasons here. Trying to make sure I don't miss any as H3, but I'll always know because at the end I will look at the table of contents and make sure everything matches up before I go ahead and post it. 
table of contents is great because it's a good thing to help you catch if your headers are off. And it's also another great way to get everything shown towards the top of your page for Google to know. Kind of lays everything out for them. Not that they probably need it as much today, but it just seems like it helps. And they're really easy to set up. Like I, you saw, I did it once and we're good. Now we have an FAQ. Let's see how many we have. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, eleven. That is a large FAQ. Still not safe to breathe the fog or smoke directly. We're gonna add to that page again. We're kind of like saying, hey, you should check this out, and then later on we'll push it to them again and they'll be done with the article. So maybe they'll be like, okay. All right, do I want to make an FAQ section? I think I will for the video. That way you know how to do it and it's set up for next time. So FAQs, there is a schema for this. So if you do slash FAQ, there's the schema. Go ahead and copy this. This is the way Google likes it. Makes the page a lot easier to use. However, you're going to be a little different because you're not going to be able to put as many ads on this spot. So it's I don't know if it's better. It's kind of new to me, but I saw Carl's video and he basically said he changed a lot of his stuff to this and just added some more. And it got a lot better. I don't know why that did copy correctly. Here we go. So just to explain it, I'm just copying the line. I highlight what is an FAQ. I paste it over it. And then copy the next area. Expand it, copy over the generic text, paste it. And this will be a collapsible menu, so they will be able to open and collapse this. And then I just delete it. You can cut it if you want. Some people do that. When you're ready for another one, just hit plus. We'll add it here. I wish there was some like test done. And if there is, maybe you can all tell me about if this is better than having these all H2. Because I really wonder. So I do it here and there. Don't do it all the time. This is a lot of FAQs. So I'm kind of thinking maybe we do most of them and then do some H2. And if you're not showing the schema, it's because you don't have the ultimate add-on for Gutenberg, because that is required to have this feature. All the really cool features probably will come one day to WordPress, but for now, they're helping set all those up. Writing stuff I know. Copying and pasting. It didn't get everything. Here we go. Can we take a quick look, see what it's looking like? I don't know if I think I put it to public or private. I have to get a picture too. But to give you an idea of what it looks like, you can see all our stuff is correct because it's set up as H2. We did have one that we messed around with the bold and we messed that up. So let me just 
change that real quick. That's it. Yeah, we're going to have to change this because some of the numbers did get bold and some didn't. Yeah, so that looks better. I'm wondering if I about the uh, font for this. I like the text, but I don't know about the other. Anyway, the FAQ, here it is. Can a micro fogger trigger a smoke alarm? Hit plus. If your micro fogger produces enough smoke, then it can trigger photoelectric or ionization alarms. However, if you have a traditional heat activated smoke alarm, then the microfogger won't trigger it. So people could quickly look through here, click what they want and set this up. But again, this limits ads because this is all one block and they, as far as I know, they can't put ads inside there. So we have five here. We're gonna look, see if any of these can be H2s or if they're all facts. They look like they're all facts. Yeah, they look like they're all facts. So we'll just continue adding them and we'll just have a huge FAQ section. I don't have too many FAQ sections on blogs because usually we just kind of do it the old way with the H2s. It's tough because like you have to click on a block to activate it and then you select it and you click on a block to activate it and then you select it. I highly doubt I'm going to find an image that I would like for this one. Turn that into an H2. That was set up quick. Let's go ahead and update it because we did all that work. Take a quick look at it. And you have all these FAQs and then you can just Let's uh, change the wording. Just to help SEO a little bit. I don't have a featured, like a main featured article. You can put it so there's always one showing here. And I don't have that master guide yet. It's just, you know, the site's just. So this is looking good. Of course, we have to go through the usual, but I don't think it's going to be that difficult because the text looks mainly split up. This paragraph here. And I don't really need bolding here because there's so many like different headings. I don't want them that to take away from that. I want them to be able to just go to each heading. So I don't want to bold too much here. Sometimes I might if these are like very long, but since they're short, there's really no point. It'll draw their eyes to the next area easily. Still want to make sure the spacing is good though. So bolding in this article should be very easy because we just don't need much of it. And then we have all of this. And if we go through it, we can add a bold in here. Looks cool. That'll keep them reading a little longer. And then they'll scroll to see this. And then down here, they'll see 10 reasons. And the number 10 
really does draw their eyes even more and they'll make them start reading these. And then when they get down there, they'll see FAQs where they can quickly identify it. Very easy to read everything here. And it'd be good to bold something down here, but I don't want to overdo it either. And there is a link, so the link may draw them down. So let's update that. Uh, we need a picture. I know there's this is not going to be on here. It would be awesome if it was, but this is kind of the default Canva stuff when they have no idea what you're searching for. This is what it looks like. Let's try adding a space. Yep, they still have no idea. Anytime you see this leaf, it's like, oh, try again. Let's see. Nope. There is just not many things on Fog Machine. Now, I did see while I was watching that video, I mean, this isn't what it looks like, but that does look cool. That's an actual fish tank. Oh, it's probably a lizard enclosure, actually. Yeah, so it looks more like a e -cig. Uh, Probably really large. It just looks small because of how it is. I mean, this could pass for it. A homemade one. Yeah, these are all like killing insects. Maybe we could just take the idea off of it and do a smoky area. This picture would be good for another time. We'll, we'll mark those just to be. Aim cleaning, no. Go to dancing, but it doesn't like it lets off smoke, but it doesn't let off that much smoke. Uh, this would be good for like a Halloween event article. I think that's about what we're gonna have. Looks like DIY made. <laughs> Ooh, not for this article, but for later. But it's like all the way off to the side. So when I was watching WPZ, WP Eagle's video, I did notice he was creating his own. So let's try that and see what happens. Just create a design, custom. I like to go this weird size. Why? I had a feeling there was going to be none for Fog Machine. Oh wait, these are templates. We need elements. I haven't used Canva too much to create stuff. I'm actually a Photoshop type person. I just got this because all those pictures for cheap is a good idea. So old. Hmm. I don't think Canva's gonna be it. I don't think the free ones are gonna work too. It's like Shutterstock, they have like everything, but the problem is you have to pay an arm and a leg. But sometimes I just sign up for one month, take all the images I like, and then just cut it down. That's not what it looks like either. I have to say the longest part of making blogs for me is the pictures. Like a hose. It could probably definitely be 
ask for what I'm looking for. I don't know. Let's see what happens when we uh blow it up a bit. We just keep the nozzle. <laughs> I mean, that does look like it. Like I said, it's just an e-sig kind of look. Yeah, let's try this. Um, maybe brightness? I don't know if we need it. Real little. And then vibrance. Again, I love vibrance like all the way up. Go 20 on that. That looks good. Like I said, it's not completely. We're using the what we got to make it work, basically. That's what happens when you get into some of these niches. It gets so niche that there's no pictures available. Oh, well, let's go in here. We're going to go to post. We're going to replace the image. Upload. There's our beautiful microfogger. Wink, wink. Save it. Fresh it. There we go. What is a microfogger? 10 reasons. You may need one. Let's see how it reads. This table contents looks good. Uh, we have a period on number two and number four and six and ten. So we want to remove those because they're not on every one. Okay, that's set up. It is small and portable. It is rechargeable and easy to use. Lots of its could replace that. It's a microfogger is small and portable. Microfogger is chargeable. If we want to do that. Is that too much? That keyword stuffing. Uh, I think we'll be okay to do it. It should be a microfogger, but I think we're just going to do it this way. Right, let's refresh, check it again. Microfogger is small and portable, it's rechargeable. Base. Yep, I think that looks better to me as an SEO person, but it could also be a little bit of keyword stuffing. I don't like the font I chose for the titles. Let's change that. Just go with Times New York. It just feels like it's making my eyes strain. Yeah, this is much better. Here we go. Another article done. So we will go into our SERP tracker and add microfogger. Obviously, nothing has really clicked yet because the site's brand new. Next is make it visible. Let's post it. Press 
refresh over here. I'm going to copy this and paste it in here. Let's see if it finds it this time. We'll request it. We'll come back because that takes a minute or two. So one final look through. I would also link other stuff together right now, but I don't do that for the first 20 or so articles until we get a little more stuff that's closer together. But for now, I just kind of give it some room. It's probably best to write really close clusters in the beginning, and then you can do that from the start. I just haven't done that. I've made a lot of websites, and I'm getting better at making them quicker and smoother, but it's still going to be some time. You learn more as you go. All right, we got indexed on there. Sweet. So let's go to the beginner guides. All right, now we have one. No featured post, though. So one didn't work. I also want to remove this. I don't know if we can. All right, I'm actually checking with Bill to see if that's possible. But in the meantime, let's do something else here. We're going to make a new file here. We're going to make it custom. Really small, 64 by 64. Unlock. Ooh. That e. Control e. let's get it inside there. I think that's probably the best we're going to be able to do. Get rid of the other layer. Fortunately, the shape isn't square. It would have been great. But let's see if we can make it work without it. So we save it as a PNG. And go to site identification. This uh, skip cropping, and there we go. So now we have these dots up here. This is how you make the site logo 64 by 64 works really well. You can go smaller, like 32 by 32, 16 by 16, but I feel like 64 by 64 gives it the best effect. So now if I go over here, you see there's a WordPress logo. If I refresh it, it's still showing the WordPress logo. Let's publish it. Da, da, da. Let's go back here and WordPress logo. And now we have the Wild Fog trademark. That makes it really nice and makes it easier to distinguish the tabs you have open. So I do recommend this. Something else you could do is you can go into WordPress and change your theme colors. I actually do that for every other website. So one will be blue, one will be green, one will be red, and I change them all the different colors. That way I notice when I'm working in something different. I don't think I have a default, so this one will be the default for now. All right, so to remove this excerpt, it's not available in Popcorn right now. I did just talk to Phil, and he is going to set it up for next release. So. We'll be able to come back and change this in the future. Big thing about this is the issue for me is it automatically puts we're an affiliate first, and I don't like that. I mean, I know you could go into the post and set your own. It's just, I don't know. I kind of just like the title and the thing. I don't know if the words really ever pull me in to read a blog. I don't know about you, but that's kind of how I do it. So we got one more to go. Everything else is looking great. Let's get this final post set up. So I'm just going to check it off on my sheet here. 
saying I've done it. This is the day after, so it's the 15th. So we're going to change it to 15th. I know you can't see this is on my keyword sheet, but I just want to know how to do it. So we got it. The keyword sheet pretty much tells you what to use for your keywords and for your title and how many words. Some of the article suggestions will be 800 words. I usually recommend a thousand minimum just because that's how I am. And a lot of people recommend 1200 minimum. So anytime you're getting under a thousand, you have to be very weary. 800 can work, but under 800, then you're really, it's really going to be hard to rank. All right. The next one's not too long and it does not have a schema. We're just going to copy this one. When you do duplicate them, they don't make it sticky, just so you know. And we'll choose edit. Do private. Save the picture for last. That way, if you don't want to stick around for that part, you don't have to. And once you put everything in here, your keywords, just click off. And it'll automatically put the dashes in for you. Let's go ahead and put the title. Right, let's go ahead and change this up. We'll just paste over that. So I copied it from my sheet and I'm just pasting it here. And now, and I do that because I want to keep the table of contents intact. The main reason I'm doing it. Now I'll go to the rest of my article, copy it from Google Sheet or from wherever you need to. Now we want to click here and drag down right above our line like that, and then paste. And sometimes this will take so long it'll pop up a message saying wait or kill. Just click wait and just wait it out. Sometimes I have to click that three or four times depending on your theme, your article, everything going on. Very easy to like misclick. Maybe I'm just always in a hurry. that let's do a quick update now we need to do some formatting here the bold part we're going to leave alone i've already went over this just to make sure it's exactly as i want it because i do like my snippets to be very direct in the beginning and then i want to try to entice them to continue reading this i'm going to bold automatically I remember doing this for like a day straight when I found out about this. I went through all my articles and changed the spacing. And then like a week later, I found out about the bolding. So I had to go all the way back through and do the bold. Uh, the bold was actually from um, Passive Income Geek. He mentioned it and I was like, that's a really good idea. <laughs> so shout outs to him for that. learning a lot so a lot of the stuff i learn is from other people some of the videos i watch i'm like yeah i know all this but i still watch it because if you get that one thing from it it's just huge they could tell you one thing that could change your whole site all right so we'll update that here this about again and you use water in a fog machine we're just gonna go ahead and grab this and link the Haze Machine article, give that a little juice. Go through and bold. Good here. We got a bold here for best results. I like that. That really hit me right there. It was a little soon, but that's a great one liner. Uh,
I guess that's pretty important. And then we'll hope the link draws them down to the finish. Take a look at the post. Check the titles. They look good. Got a little list here that's nice. Yeah, coming together great. And we got rid of that broken thing down here, so that's good. Awesome. So I just need a picture because everything does look good here. Use water and a fog machine. Water and fog. I had a feeling it would bring up lakes. As I was typing and I was like, uh, yeah, probably not. We are not getting what we need on this niche. We could just use a generic picture. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I like that it's blurred a little bit too. Is there a fog filter? Uh, that kind of looks a little... Yeah, this, this, the vibrance kind of takes away from the fogish effects, but I think that's good enough. Again, I'm copying keywords as the file name. Good habit to get into. One quick look with the picture. Yeah, I don't love it, but decent. If we really wanted to, we could look into this post and probably find something here. Safe to breathe, we could link that to our other article. All right, let's look good, let's publish it. And you guys can see all of this at wildfog.com. I think we're pretty much done do a final look at this and then we'll just check the other pages make sure everything looks good the theme really does help out with all of the things that are kind of annoying it does make it pretty good so i do recommend the theme at this point and i'm looking forward to the update which will have a nice bit feature for me check out our home page you have your features and then you have your latest uh the latest that cuts it off up the formatting of the latest posts. Wonder if something. I mean, I understand that it's trying to block it. It's just I made them for this. So maybe if we just change 
two instead of three, if that's an option. And I don't think that's an option, but I'm gonna check with him, see if that's something that we can change, because I definitely want these sideways instead of square. So hopefully that's an option we can add. And yeah. So to get the posts away from the square on the front page, we did have to add some CSS. So this is what it looked like beforehand, but I wanted mine to match up here because I'm just so used to it. So Phil provided me with this code and it will go ahead and move it just like this. So this is the code if you want to type it up. It's pretty simple and that will take care of that. One other thing I wanted to do is change the social menu. Let's publish it first just in case. So what I do is go in popcorn theme options, go to popcorn footer settings, and I'm just going to disable it altogether because I don't plan on having any social on this. So we're just going to zap it all together. Could get rid of the privacy menu and disclaimer and copyright all that as well. We're going to just kind of leave it like that. I don't have a privacy set up yet. We'll probably do that in a future video. They're not really the funnest things to set up, but we'll take care of that then. So we'll just publish this. Because this site, I don't plan on doing any social at all. Sometimes you do want to do one or two. It's completely up to you on how much work you want to put in. I have enough projects and I don't need any more social. So I've learned that the best way to do it is just get rid of it and do it this way. This is the best bang for my time. Let's go ahead and finish up the final parts. Add the keyword. Add the website. And then I'm going to check it off on my sheet here. And now we have four out of the 25 keywords completed. Looking at the keywords, they do look good. There are four buyer guides. I will do the buyer guides at the very end because I want to get the information content flowing. Might not be the very last ones, but it will be towards the end. I don't really like doing four buyer's guides in a row, so I might do two and then do a few more info and then two more other buyer's guides. The buyer guides, I do like to go ahead and have created for me. I've made buyer guides and I don't like it. It's not fun. So I'll be using Request Writer for that. Awesome. Again, thanks so much for watching. We're going to cut this now because it's really, really, really long. And thanks so much. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Also, if you want to talk more, you can always join my Discord. The information's below. Some of the things I mentioned in this video are affiliates, so there may be affiliate links down below. And have a great day. I'm excited for the next video where we go ahead and create an article on our own. Thanks for the view.